Hi everyone, what's up? Today I want to show you how you can solve Newton's cooling law differential equation. So this is a very nice differential equation because it can be solved very easily using separation of variables. And this equation, I think it shows you a very intuitive way to see, you know, to try to understand temperature and how temperature uh, behaves between the environment and a very, you know, any, any particular object, okay? So when we solve this equation, um, I want to, you know, I just want to explain something really nice about, about temperature, okay? And yeah, I think that's cool, okay? So yeah, uh, I'm going to show you the equation now. So this differential equation goes like this. The change in temperature, which I'm just going to, you know, is going to be called dt with respect to time. So this is, small t is going to be time and big t is going to be temperature. And this is going to be equal to minus k times temperature minus t sub e. Now in this context, t sub e is going to be the external temperature. So we use the differential equation when we have some sort of object and we know we will, we want to create a function for temperature with respect to time for that object. And we also know the temperature of the environment surrounding that object, okay? So say, you know, if you leave some sort of uh, you know, ball or some sort of, you know, object in a table, well, the air surrounding this object is going to be its surrounding environment, okay? And if you can, you know, if you find the temperature of the surrounding air, well, that value is going to be equal to T sub E, okay? So that is, you know, how you can interpret this, uh, this, this number, okay? So now, what am I going to do now? Well, this is very nice because you can see that this is a um, a differential equation that can be solved using separation of variables, which makes it really easy to solve. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna move t and t sub e to the left hand side and d, d and dt, t in this case being time, to the right hand side, okay? So yeah, uh, let's do that. So I'm gonna get uh, d big t divided by t minus t sub e. So it's gonna be external temperature. And this is gonna be equal to, uh, we have minus k dt, okay? So this is what we get. Remember, we can, you know, separate these two differentials. Differentials, you know, in this case are just, uh, you can treat them as, you know, totally normal numbers, numbers that, you know, real numbers that you already know how to deal with. So you can, you know, move them around, you can multiply and divide by them and so on, okay? So this, what we just did, is totally legal. And that's, you know, that's how separation of variables goes, okay? Now, we can integrate both sides of this equation because if we do so, well, we're going to get back. Yeah, we can, you know, you can interpret minus k and this subtraction as derivatives. And if you want to get back to the original function, well, you got to integrate. You got to, you know, anti-differentiate. So I'm going to write, you know, you know write, write here some uh, anti-differentiation signs, some integral signs. Now, this, that the left-hand side of integral is very easy to solve. You can probably just, you know, uh, write it... Uh, write it right away, but I'm gonna show you the substitution that you can use. So you can let m be equal to uh, t minus t sub e, which means that the differential of m is gonna be equal to the differential of t. Remember, t is the variable that, that we care about, and in this case, the derivative of t is gonna be equal to one. So you just get dt. And that means that you can write this antiderivative as uh, the, the antiderivative of dm, divided by m, and we know this is going to be equal to the natural log of m, uh, we, and I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to add some constant c1, and now this right hand side antiderivative, it's also very easy to compute, and we know it is going to be equal to minus k dt, okay, so minus k not dt, I'm sorry, minus kt, and you get, you could say you get another constant c2, eventually c1 and c2 they're gonna, you know, they're gonna, you can combine them together and you're just gonna get one constant. So usually we don't write C1 and C2, we just write C in one side of the equation and that's it. But, you know, you can write this if it makes you feel better, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is, well, we know that M, I'm, let me write the entire thing again. So this is gonna be natural log of uh, T minus external temperature. Uh, this is gonna be T sub E. And this is going to be equal to minus kt, so this is going to be kt plus big C, okay? I'm just going to write big C here. As I mentioned before, you can just add the two constants together. Now, we need to find t as a function of time, okay? So, when we get to this point, you know, we just need to play the algebra. We just need to solve for t, okay? And hopefully, you already know how to do that. 
and the you know the probably the only step that we can do here is that well we need to get rid of this ln because t is inside ln and it's you know it's kind of uncomfortable to have ln here so what am i going to do well i'm going to use base e here so i'm just going to say e and i'm also going to you know write a parenthesis here and i'm also going to use uh e here so when you we use base e remember these two they get cancelled out and you get some expression on the right hand side so let's see what we get i'm going to get uh, t i'm going to move uh, minus t to the other side of the equation and we're going to get the following so we're going to have external temperature uh and this is going to be plus uh we have e to the c remember i'm just distributing the exponents here remember there's an exponent rule that allows you to uh to distribute a a addition of ex an addition of exponents into factors uh into factors that include those exponents so basically this is just going to be equal to e to the c times e to the minus kt okay so this is what we get now this is a very nice equation because it allows us to find e to the c remember c is going to be any constant which means that we can have any constant here and if we consider that here we need to consider the context of this differential equation so usually a lot of times when you're dealing with an object and you know the temperature of the surrounding environment you know the temperature of the object usually you know this is just something that happens in experiments you know the temperature of the object that you're dealing with and if you know that well you can do something really nice because remember that if you're dealing with you know temperature um i hope that you know that temperature is going to evolve with time the temperature the temperature in an object is going to evolve with time which means that at t equals zero at time equals zero is going to have some very specific temperature and that temperature well it's going to be equal to the initial temperature that you already know about okay so if we already know that there is a point in the function so i'm going to write it like this for the function temperature as a function of time so t of t we know i'm going to write it like this there is the following point i'm going to say that we know that at t equals zero so i'm going to use the notation so you know that we're using time at t equals zero we know that well we're going to have the initial temperature of the object okay which i'm just going to call t sub zero okay or t naught i think t naught is you know a better way to call it so yeah i'm going to call this t naught and t naught is going to be the initial temperature of the object okay so when we begin our experiment well what's the initial temperature of the object that's something that you know if you're a physicist you should know that uh usually you know depending on whatever you're dealing with but most of the times you will so you know it's 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 okay and it's well okay is not the word it's relevant and it's appropriate to use t naught as the measure as the value for initial temperature and now we can use this point in the graph of t of t to find this constant okay and let me show you how we can do that so if we evaluate this equation at t equals zero let's see what we get so we're going to get that t is going to be equal to t naught that's going to be the output of the function so we get that t naught is going to be equal to the external temperature uh, plus e to the c times e to the minus k zero okay k times zero so this is what we get now we know this is going to be equal to external temperature and we know this is going to be e to the zero which is equal to one and that means that we just get plus uh, e to the c okay now this is very nice because we can now isolate e to the c and find the constant and we get that e to the c is going to be equal to we can move t sub e to the other side of the equation and we get that this is going to be t naught minus t sub e okay which is going to be the external temperature now this is going to now we can just simply you know plug this value into this equation and we have finally found a function for t okay so i'm going to write this in red so temperature as a function of time is going to be the following it's going to be the external temperature which is going to be t sub e plus e to the c we know e to the c is equal to t naught minus t sub e so we i'm going to write a parenthesis and this is going to be equal to t naught where t naught equals the initial temperature of the object minus t sub e that this is supposed to be an e minus t sub e and we're gonna have e to the minus kt okay so this is gonna be e to the minus kt okay nice and this is going to be the solution for 
our differential equation, okay? Now, I think this solution is really cool to see because uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something. So if you rewrite this uh, this expression, you're gonna get the following. You're gonna get uh, t naught minus t sub e, so it's gonna be sub e divided by e to the k times t. Now, what happens if you let time approach zero? And that is well, what happens if you take the limit as t approaches, not zero, did I mention zero? I, I meant as t approaches infinity, okay? What happens as t approaches infinity? Well, it's something really nice and very intuitive, and it's exactly what happens in real life. Well, as t approaches infinity, you can see that this right-hand term is going to approach zero, okay? It doesn't really matter what this constant, what this abstraction yields, this is going to be a constant, and as t approaches infinity, this term is going to be zero, so basically you can just ignore it, and t as a function of time, temperature as a function of time, is going to be equal to the external temperature. Now this makes a lot of sense because in physics, well, I, ho I hope that you know that when you, have, you know, when you have two bodies and they have different temperatures, one body is going to start transferring heat and energy to the other body or to the other substance, until both of them have the same temperature, okay, and this is what we call equilibrium. When both of them are, uh, you know, when both of these objects or substances have the same temperature, well, we can say that the system, the this, this system of bodies and variables, is going to be in equilibrium. And this equation represents that, okay? This equation, uh, you know, there are, of course, some caveats. Is that how you say that in English, caveats? Cave I hope that is. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is that there are exceptions and there are, you know, some things that, some conditions, but overall, I think that this equation really shows you that you can have some weird differential equation, and the result is going to be something that is coherent, and uh, it's going to be something that is consistent with reality, okay? In reality, we know that as time approaches infinity, well, both, both systems, both bodies are going to have the same temperature, which means that T, which is going to be the temperature of the body, is going to be equal to the external temperature, okay? which is the only term that we have left, okay, that we have in our, you know, in our expression, okay? So, you know, I thought that was really nice and I thought that was, you know, worth mentioning. So, yeah, that's been the entire video. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. This is, this is, you know, a very cool yet simple differential equation. So, that is very nice. And, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something and I hope to see you in the following video. Bye.